Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we'll be covering methods on how to write an exploit. The exploit in question won't be a binary exploitation based exploit, but instead we will hack a web service. We'll make a script that exploits the vulnerability for webmin. We'll use the content from the Try Hack Me room for this topic, which is an excellent room and I definitely recommend it. So let's get started. I'm gonna skip to the good part immediately and right here we can see credentials for the webmin interface as well as the version. If we google this, the webmin 1580 the first match is actually exploit db's exploit for the exact version that we're looking for. Since I want to know more about this exploit before I can get into the code, I'm going to read some information about the CVE number tied to this vulnerability. And it looks like there is a vulnerability in a file slash show dot CGI. This allows the attacker to use an invalid character to run a command. In this case, it's going to be the pipe character. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to confirm webmin's version just to make sure. And then we'll find a way to exploit it by following the code of the existing exploits. Let's look up search exploit for this exploit and then copy it in our home directory so we can read it and understand it. After that we're going to be coding our own python script to exploit this vulnerability. The idea for this is to catch the reverse connection with netcat and if we read the exploit information we'll see that it's divided into three parts. Initialize, check and exploit. This is due to the fact that this is a metasploit module so in order for it to load into metasploit and for it to be editable like metasploit module modules, it has to be formed like that. But for us, the only thing that's really important is the exploit part, where we can see the URL in question as well as the parameters that we have to provide. And if I provide a string of five characters and a pipe character, and then after that a command, I'll get the output in a txt file a few seconds later. First time I ran this, I thought there was no command output, but then 30 seconds later or something like that, I got a download. So anyways, to understand this vulnerability, we can read through the GitHub update uh, or the text from the challenge. The point is the CGS script now has permission checking for the file opening as well as regex line to sanitize malicious inputs like the pipe character. The script of course didn't have that before, uh, leaving not only the option for the attacker to run commands but also to run them as root. Now let's go back to the code and see how are we going to rewrite this in Python. We need to identify all the necessary steps, so running the reverse shell command in the background is always a good idea, so it doesn't get too interrupted with web service procedures. Looking at TryHackMe's instructions, we can see that the exploit part of the script uh, has a part where we log in first, then take the cookie and disassemble it, and then use it as a, within a second command. But we're gonna do it in a little bit of a different way, which is just a little bit easier in my opinion. There are also some notes about the payload being encoded too, and also there's a command where we send the payload itself. So let's write our exploit. And since we want to make the script more welcoming to the users, we're going to modify the inputs and put them at the top so it's pretty straightforward on how to prepare our exploit. The parameters we need are the victim's IP, our IP, our port, which we are listening on with netcat, our payload, and I think that's it for now. We will fill out the post data with the username and the password, our login URL with the target IP, and we'll send the post request as well as the data in order for us to log in. After we've logged in, we could extract the cookie just like TryHackMe said, but I have a better way, so we're going to use sessions from the requests module from Python. It is really easy, so all we're going to do is we'll use s.post instead of requests.post, and s is the session that we defined before, and then later when we use s.get or s.post, it is going to use the same session. So after that, we will send our payload using s.get or s.post. I'll also add an ending message to everything that went well, uh, just so we can check for the the status codes and to know if we've successfully logged in and also after that if our exploit has went through. I put the quit statement right here if the login fails to stop the exploit and I also imported a random in order to form some random characters we'll need for the part before the pipe character. The random few characters in this case are going to be hawks for the first few and a random letter on the last spot uh, with a random number in between that. You can of course use anything you want uh, and I test ran the exploit to try out the login but I got no out so I decided to look into a few things and I realized that I made a tiny mistake and I forgot to add a range parameter to rent int. So after fixing that, I've also added the part where the payload is being sent. After modifying the parameters and sending the payload through our session, we should make sure that we make checks of what's being sent, just to know that everything went well. We should also encode the payload according to TryHackMe, and I'm going to assume that uh, encoding in question is actually URL encoding, since we are sending commands through the URL and we want to deliver our commands clean. We don't want to have any problems with URL encoding getting to the terminal. 
signal uh, as a command, which we didn't have to do with the who am I because there were no special symbols. After importing URL lib.parse and adding the line to encode our payload, we can run our exploit and if you have coded everything right, you should easily get a shell. Oh, and I realized that tryhackme used f-strings at forming of the URLs, which I didn't use, so I just fixed those quickly and uh, now my string formatting looks right. So now I can retry everything and everything is going to work perfectly. And after that, I just looked into my netcat after running the exploit and bam, there we go. We just hacked the system and we got root. How awesome was that? So let's get our flag and finish this challenge. So there you go, even though this is a simple python script, it's an awesome exploit and a great try hack me room. It removes the fear that people have when talking about exploit writing when everyone talks about buffer overflows and similar stuff like that. Even though exploit writing can be a lot of other things, for example, web vulnerabilities are really popular and the feeling of writing your exploit is just something amazing and I definitely can't wait to hear from you guys if you have found any vulnerabilities or wrote any exploits or if you have any POCs for anything that you found in your research. And in my opinion, this is a way easier method in getting people into writing their own exploits. And it's definitely really fun. If you have any questions, let me know. I will link the room down in the description. And that will be all for today. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.